Dear students, I will continue to elaborate on the concepts and terminologies that are useful in creating phylogenetic trees. To just give you a background, the rooted and unrooted trees were used to construct the phylogenetic trees. In case of the rooted trees, we had a root node that led to the other inner nodes which eventually converted into the sequences that we provided to the program. In case of the unrooted tree, we do not have a root and the time scale cannot be shown along with the direction of evolution. So let's examine the properties of these trees further. So as I was just talking about the rooted and unrooted trees, here you see a rooted tree and here is the example of an unrooted tree. So in case of the rooted tree, you have A at the root, while in this case you have nothing as a root. So to give you a naive opinion or simplistic opinion, we should always be using the rooted trees because they help us to organize the order of evolution as compared to the unrooted trees. So apparently the unrooted trees are no good. But there are several advantages of the unrooted trees as well. For instance, rooted trees are computationally very expensive because one rooted tree can be represented in multiple forms. However, the unrooted tree can only be represented in a single form. Let's take an example. So this was our rooted tree but as you can see this can be represented in different ways but in case of the unrooted tree we only have one case so here 1 and 2 are related to an internal node and 3 and the internal node are then related through the root. The situation can be different wherein 1 and 3 are related and then 2 comes in and gets connected by the root. So here 2 and 3 are related which is different from the previous two cases and 1 is related to 2 and 3 through the root. So there can be 3 different cases and 3 different rooted trees. But if you look at the unrooted tree, it can represent this entire information by using just this simple tree. So therefore, rooted trees are computationally expensive. As you increase the number of sequences, as shown here in this table, the number of rooted trees increases very fast, while the number of unrooted tree does not increase that much. So essentially, if you want to compute the phylogenetic tree and if you have a low computing power, then you may want to go the way of the unrooted trees. But then, unrooted trees have their own disadvantages as well. Also, another additional and very useful point to note here is that the length of the branch the length of the branch can represent the distance as well. Let's take a look at the molecular clock. So the molecular clock is essentially the measurement of time that it has taken for these sequences to evolve. So in case of the rate of evolution, it is different for different species. So, evolution in mice may be happening at a different rate depending on their metabolic state and the environment in which they live versus humans and their environment. So, humans live in a different environment. They have a different metabolic physiological state while the other species have a different metabolic equilibrium. This can only be reflected in by using these branches with different lengths. So without a clock, you can represent the branches with different lengths, but with a clock, this becomes equal. 
So this is very useful if you want to look at the distance between the two species. So to conclude, rooted and unrooted trees are used to show relationships between biological sequences. These evolutionary relationships have many attributes such as the ancestor, the time it takes to arrive at that state and sequence and so on. So this requires you to frame your problem and then see which type of tree you would want to use and then see the uh, utilize the strengths of that uh, phylogenetic tree.